subscribe tag tv youtube channel and press the notification button Good evening. Welcome to South Asia Newsline. I'm Shreya Savage. Here are the top stories we are tracking for you on Thursday, the 9th of September. Indian PM Modi chairs BRICS summit amid Afghanistan crisis. Counter-terrorism tops agenda. Afghan students confused by Taliban changes in education. Stricter division between men and women. And Nepal's parliament put off of Friday after opposition raises slogans against speaker. And now for all the details. Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi chaired the 13th BRICS summit held in virtual format on Thursday. The five nation grouping resolved to adopt the BRICS counterterrorism plan that came in the backdrop of Taliban's takeover of Afghanistan which poses several security challenges to the region. Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi chaired the 13th summit of the BRICS held in virtual format on Thursday during which the five nation grouping adopted a counter terrorism action plan this came in the backdrop of emerging situation after Taliban's takeover in Afghanistan which poses several security challenges in the region PM Modi said we have to ensure that BRICS is more productive in next 15 years and held shared position on strengthening and improving multilateral systems aaj hum vishv ki ubharti arthvyavasthaon ke liye ek prabhavkari aawaz hai vikasil deshon ki prathmikataon par dhyan kendrit karne ke liye bhi yah manch upyogi ho raha Russian President Vladimir Putin outlined that Afghanistan should not become a threat to its neighboring countries, a source of terrorism and drug trafficking. This came as the Taliban has raised concern of the international community over the composition of the new cabinet in Afghanistan. At least 14 members of the hardline interim government are on the UN Security Council's terrorism blacklist, including acting prime minister. Rescue operations continued on Thursday to find two missing persons in a boat capsized incident on Jorhat in India's northeast in Assam state. At least one person died in the incident that happened on Wednesday. At least 87 people had been rescued till the last reports came in. Teams of disaster management workers resumed rescue operations on Thursday to trace the missing passengers of the capsized boat. which collided with a larger boat a day earlier on the Brahmaputra river in Jorhat district of India's northeastern Assam state at least one person died in the incident and 87 out of 90 passengers had been rescued or swam to safety while two were still missing officials said till the last reports came in Assam's chief minister Himanta Biswa Sarma also visited the site on Thursday and suspended three officials for negligence while directing a high level inquiry into the incident the boda district has confirmed one death and two missing uh harder search operation is going on i i hope that we will be able to come out with some firm picture by afternoon india's prime minister narendra modi in a tweet said he was saddened by the boat accident and assured all possible efforts to rescue the passengers Assam's chief minister also ordered a ban on private ferries without a marine engine as he blamed mismanagement to be the prime reason for the mishap. Moving on, the ousted Afghan government's ambassador to Tajikistan has stated that the resistance force are still fighting the Taliban in Panchi province, denying claims that Panchi leader Ahmad Shah Massoud and former Afghan vice president Amrullah Saleh have fled Afghanistan amid the onslaught of the Taliban. The ousted Afghan government's ambassador to Tajikistan said on Wednesday that Panchiri leader Ahmad Shah Massoud and former Afghan vice president Amrullah Saleh have not fled Afghanistan and their resistance forces are still fighting the Taliban. 
Zahir Akbar, envoy to Dushanbe under the government of ousted Afghan President Ashraf Ghani, told a news conference in Tajikistan capital that he was in regular contact with Saleh and the resistance leaders were out of general communication for security reasons. <laughs> اگر اونا فرار میکردن در روز حول تمام شرایط را داشتن فرار میکردن همرولای صالح دوامدار با اونا در ارتباط هستن اونا فعلا سرپرستی ریاست جمهوری افغانستان را به دوش دارن در داخل خاک افغانستان در پنشیب قرار دارن The Taliban swept to power last month and the militant group has said they have captured the Panjshir Valley a last holdout province though the resistance has not conceded defeat. Roya Rahmani, Afghanistan's first female ambassador to the United States, who left her post in July in an interview, accused the former US-backed government in Kabul of a failure to lead the country and of widespread corruption that ultimately paved the way for the Taliban's victory last month. It was not the Afghan forces that they were not willing to fight for their freedom and for protection of their people. It was the leadership that was corrupt. And uh, they uh, handed over basically the, the country to the Taliban. Former President Ashraf Ghani, in a statement posted on Twitter on Wednesday, apologized for the abrupt fall of his government but denied he had taken millions of dollars with him. Ghani fled Kabul as Taliban forces reached the outskirts of the city last month. Meanwhile, the Taliban has said that the new government in Afghanistan will be led by Taliban leader Mullah Hibatullah Akhundzada. Taliban spokesman Zabihullah Mujahid on Wednesday said that the group will reject foreigners' intervention over the name and its structure of the next government. More on news from Afghanistan. Taliban's return to power has alarmed women in Afghanistan who feel they will lose the rights they fought for in the last two decades. As students have started returning to university for the first time since the Taliban stormed to power, in some cases, females have been separated from their male peers by curtains or boards down in the middle of the classroom. A Taliban spokesman has also said that the group will forbid women from playing cricket and other sports where their bodies might be seen. Afghan students returning to university classrooms this week say they are confused by the changes made to the educational system after the Taliban takeover. In some cases, females have been separated from their male peers by curtains or boats down the middle of the room. According to a teacher in a university, the institution is trying to accept these new instructions and encourage students to attend their classes. امروز آمدیم در کل خوب بودن دخترها کم تو آمدن پسر رو بیشتر بودن پیدات هایشون گفتن رئیس پنزه که سنف های دخترها رو جدا میکنیم با بچه ها و همچنان تایم های درسشون شاید تغییر کنه و تایم بچه ها و دخترها هم تغییر خواهد کرد و امتحان ها هم دوباره برگزار میشه روز سر از روز شنبه بخیر دوشنبه چهارشنبه بخیر شروع میشه ببینیم چی میشه در کل هم خیلی قیدگیری اومده ما رو میخوان به زمان قند پیش پیش گذشته های گذشته ها ببرن قیدگیری قیدات the Taliban regime on Tuesday unveiled a caretaker government and shortly after being named as Afghanistan's education minister, Taliban leader Sheikh Malvi Nurullah Munir questioned the relevance of higher education. He said that PhD and master's degrees are not valuable as mullahs don't have them and yet they are the greatest of all. What happens in universities and schools across the country will be closely watched by foreign powers for signs of what rights women will have now the Islamist militant movement is back in charge. Some Western countries have said vital aid and recognition of the Taliban would depend on how they ran the country, including their treatment of girls and women. Earlier, a Taliban spokesperson, Ahmadullah Wasik, exclusively told Australian network SBS on Wednesday that the Islamist group will ban women from playing cricket and other sports. It was not needed and their bodies might be exposed. When it last ruled from 1996 to 2001, the group banned girls from school and women from university and work. Despite assurances in recent weeks that women's rights would be honored in accordance with the Islamic law, it is unclear what that will mean in practice. In news from Pakistan, 
Pakistan's Foreign Minister Shah Mahmood Qureshi has proposed the idea of inviting Taliban leaders in future regional meetings during a virtual gathering of foreign ministers of nations which are neighbors of Afghanistan. Qureshi said it is important to take steps to prevent an economic meltdown in the war-torn country. Pakistan's Foreign Minister Shah Mahmood Qureshi on Wednesday suggested inviting Taliban-run Afghanistan to a regional forum of six countries to help avert a humanitarian and economic crisis in the country. Qureshi floated the idea while chairing a virtual conference that brought together Pakistan, China, Tajikistan, Uzbekistan, Iran and Turkmenistan to discuss the Afghan strategy. The meeting came a day after the Taliban announced an interim government in Afghanistan. I also suggest that we may give consideration to the idea to invite Afghanistan in future. Participation of Afghanistan will augment this forum's effectiveness in pursuing our shared objectives for lasting peace and stability in Afghanistan. In the latest on Thursday, a Pakistani military aircraft carrying relief goods including flour, cooking oil and medicine landed in Afghan capital. Pakistani ambassador to Afghanistan Mansoor Ahmed Khan said it is the first in a series of planned relief flights. The United Nations has said basic services are unraveling in Afghanistan, with food and other aid about to run out as the country faces a drought and economic collapse. Moving on to news from Nepal. Ruckus erupted in Nepal's parliament on Wednesday as opposition CP and UML lawmakers picketed well and chanted slogans against Speaker Agni Prasad Sapkota, blaming him for playing a major role in their party split after he decided not to sack 14 UML lawmakers from the lower house despite the party's recommendation. CPN UML Chair KP Sharma Oli had expelled the 14 lawmakers, including senior leader Madhav Kumar Nepal, for defying party whip as they sided with the then opposition leader Sher Bahadur Deuba during a vote of confidence in May. The Wednesday session could not be conducted over repeated obstructions and was adjourned till September 10th. An ordinance brought by incumbent PM Deuba led government last month had paved the way for the CPN UML to split. Madhav Kumar Nepal has now formed a new party called CPN Unified Socialist and announced he will join the Deobas coalition government. Discarded cigarette butts are considered to be major environmental pollutants. A young entrepreneur in northern India has started a venture to recycle them and convert them into cushions, toys and mosquito repellents. A young entrepreneur based in Mohali city of India's northern Punjab state has started a venture to recycle cigarette butts and curb pollution. Twinkle Kumar, who lost his job during COVID-19 lockdown, started watching YouTube videos for an idea to start some work and then he got to know about the concept to segregate the cigarette butts. He also approached a company that was already doing this and learned the process. To collect discarded cigarette butts, Kumar has installed bins at commercial spaces with smoking zones and later they manually separate paper and tobacco and convert them into manure and the filters are treated and then made into cushions, toys and mosquito repellents. So, this procedure comes from cigarette butts from cellulose acid, filter and paper. So, this is the idea to separate the idea that the house is made of वो बैठ के बहुत अच्छा काम आपस में जैसे होती हैं बैठ के बहुत अच्छा काम कर सकती हैं तो हमने कांटेक्ट किया यहां की लोकल महिलाओं को जो बाहर जाकर काम नहीं कर पाती द लोकल वुमेन होम कुमार हैज एम्प्लॉयड हेल्प हिम इन द कलेक्शन प्रोसेसिंग एंड कन्वर्जन ऑफ बर्ड्स डिस्कार्डेड सिगरेट फिल्टर्स आल्सो नोन एज बर्ड्स आर वन ऑफ द मोस्ट लिटर्ड ऑब्जेक्ट्स ऑन अर्थ एंड अ मेजर एनवायरमेंटल पोल्यूटेंट well, that's all we have for you from South Asia this evening. Now viewers can watch the show on SouthAsianewsline.com. You can also visit us on Facebook.com slash SAsianewsline and follow us on Twitter at SAsianewsline. That's all in tonight's edition. We will see you same time tomorrow. Good night. Subscribe Tag TV YouTube channel and press the notification button.